another week. Guess what? More drift cars. So this week on Driftland Drift Garage, we've got uh, one of our E46 compact, uh, E46 325 compacts. We've been building them for the drift school. Uh, we've got our first drift experience actually just coming up. So we're just finishing off uh, building all the cars for that. Um, so we've added a couple of extra E46s in, so we've got that to finish preparation on. Um, we've also got Connor Rich's E30. Um, that is in for some oil leaks. So when Connor was out on track, uh, we actually black flagged him a couple of times for oil leaks. So he booked the car in with us. Uh, so yeah, we found some power steering leaks, a couple of other things. So we'll get that all buttoned up. He's going to be drifting that pretty soon. Um, Sam Hudson has a black E36 323, I think it is. Uh, Sam, quite new drifting. Um, bought that car from Fizzy, hi Fizzy, um, and when he bought it I heard what sounded like injector tick, uh, generally on an M52, M50, if you hear injector tick then it is most probably uh, a camshaft sensor, so I'd mentioned that a few months ago, um, so he booked it in to get that uh, looked at, so we had a look over and it does need a, a cam sensor it would, it would seem, so uh, we'll get that fitted, I think it's getting an oil service and a uh, complimentary drift inspection as well. Um, other than that, uh, I will be doing a little bit more on E21, that's going to be getting ready to go uh, very shortly, so just a little bit of paint work, nothing major there. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll see what else we get up to. We have Connor Rich's E30 here. It's quite a cool looking new car. It's got um, a 6 cylinder 33 engine in it. It's got cool rotor reps on it. This is in for quite a severe oil leak. So we're going to check that out and see what the script is for that. So we managed to find the oil leak on Connor, Connor Rich's car. Uh, it turned out that the, the sump was leaking from the dipstick tube. The, um, the rubber seal on that wasn't holding oil in. It's common, the perish. So that will need replaced. And while we were under there checking the car, we also noticed um, one of the power steering lines, the rubber one, was rubbing on the subframe. Um, that's uh, weeping a bit as well, so that will need replaced. So we'll get that fixed and get the car ready for Connor to use again on the track without any issues. Amjid. Kyle. You alright? I'm alright. Right. Would you rather have penises for fingers or vaginas for ears? Vaginas for ears so I can fuck myself. You would go vagina ears as well. You take fanny ears over dick fingers. Aye. So this is school car number five, we've just finished and getting it, we've just finished getting it ready for the experiences. It's just been in for the front lower arm poly bushes, uh, lollipop poly bushes, so we've replaced them for Perflex ones. Also done a prop centre bearing on it and uh, also done a prop donut on it. So that should be good to go for the first experience. So we've got Sam Hudson, Sam Hudson's car in. Um, it originally came in for a, a ticking noise coming from the top. So the customer had asked us to change oil. Uh, we did a diagnostics check on the car at the same time and it kept throwing up a, a cam sensor. So we're going to change that today. Um, it's just behind us solenoid here, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that uh, with a genuine BMW part. Well this is Sam Hudson's uh, cam sensor, I've removed it now. Um, it's not really much to see here, but it kept me throwing an error code in the computer, cam sensor. Yeah, we'll get this put back just to give you an idea. 
quite a lot of stripping involved. It goes in right where my finger is in there, and then it plugs in underneath the inlet manifold. See that plug there? So it plugs into there. Um, so yeah, genuine BMW parts only. Because uh, the, the Eurocar parts and other stuff, all the aftermarket ones, they don't work too great. So there we have it, the new cam sensor all fitted. Put the van or so one way back on as well. Now we're going to go into a uh, rear wheel bearing replacement as it's very grumbly when the car's driven and it's on load. Right, Stu, if you spin it, you hear that noise, that's dry inside. There is absolutely, as you can see, Stu's giving that a shake. There is no play at all. It's just unfortunate the wheel bearing is dry inside. So we'll go ahead and replace that next. So this is Sam Hudson's uh, E36 rear wheel bearing. As you can see, the, um, it all fell apart, taking it off. This is a new one going in. This will get pressed in. I'll show you. That's all out. Need to clean all that up. Then I'll press the new bearing in there. So before Jason's car goes, uh, just a couple of things to finish off. Uh, one of them was uh, priming and painting the frame that holds the splitter. So it's all nice and shiny black now. Get them refitted and back on the car. I'm going to take you take you up to the ivory tower, as we call it. So up here is where our fiberglassing gets done but we also use it as a, a little spray booth um, just generally anything that needs to be done in a warm environment um, this is roasted in here so in here we have the E21 doors now I know what you're thinking you're thinking okay we've already done them they're all done nah so the bond didn't really work so we had to redo the bond so I actually used JB Weld so you can see the handles are bonded in now just waiting for the bond to cure and then we'll get them back on the car but yeah so the the original epoxy that we used uh, wasn't quite up to the job so we went for JBL I've not used JBL before but it seemed to be pretty good stuff so we'll see how that goes um, much more confident in this stuff than the last that uh, the handles are going to work uh, and they're going to bond to the door real nice would you rather, would I rather? have penises for fingers or vaginas for ears Oh, vaginas for ears. Dick hands or fanny ears? Dick hands. No. Fanny ears. Why? I can shove things in it. <laughs> <I can. laughs> Great this week, along with doing the E21 for Jason, um, oh, I'm also working on the Volvo again. The Volvo was in the vlog uh, a few weeks ago, just before Christmas actually, I think. Um, and the main reason that it's not been back in the vlog is because we were waiting on parts coming from Volvo so I'm just going to show you what it is we've been up to Okay, so what we were waiting on from Volvo was a replacement for this uh, which is a push for the gear linkage um, so we did a bit of research, got the part numbers from Volvo uh, on a website online, uh, phoned a local Volvo dealership ordered this bush uh, and a couple other ones for the gear linkage set up because they were all a bit worn um, and we said sort of three to five days for one and it was two weeks for this one here so we waited oh I don't know about a month and a half maybe something like that I'd been phoning them repeatedly um, twice a week and they couldn't tell me anything uh, all they could tell me is that the bush was coming from their retro Swedish department um, so that was sort of before Christmas there, came into the turn of the year and we spoke to them and they said that they still didn't have the bush so I demanded that we get some sort of deadline because obviously we need to get this car built for the customer and the guys came back and said oh we'll have it for summer so uh, Kokori Volvo 
Eh, fuck you, useless cunts. So, because we couldn't get this for many, 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 many weeks, what we did is we ordered the Powerflex uh, <coughs> bush kit. This is a um, sort of multi-purpose universal bush kit. Uh, just a top hat bush. So it comes with uh, a sleeved insert uh, to go in the middle, which we cut and then I've actually drilled out as well to be the right size. Uh, and then also you get these bushes here. Well, as you can see, I've cut these down to the right size we need, so we don't need these bits. We can chuck them away. Uh, so the combination of these two top hat bushes and this insert here will make up the new bush. So that is kind of similar to this. So it took a good bit of work to get it to fit. Uh, and then while I was sorting this out, it turned out <coughs> that this linkage had been, had been, it's been modified because the car doesn't run the original gearbox and it had been modified pretty badly. So you can see here we've actually done some work on it. Um, originally the way it was welded, there was a, a big edge in here. Uh, so I was buffing this out to get the bush to sit in centre uh, and then started to find lots of holes. Uh, and it turned out that the welding was really porous. I mean, it is difficult to weld this sort of stuff. This sort of aluminium cast stuff is generally pretty terrible to weld. So, yeah, it was a bit of a mission. Um, I went along next door to our friendly neighbourhood alloy welder. Uh, I did some cutting, some grinding, and then he just puts his nice couple of welds on and gave it a buff. Uh, so, yeah, it's nice and strong now. It's not going to break. So the idea is that I put all this bushing together uh, and then put the rest of the linkage together. Uh, got the shifter here, um, the rear pivot with the shifter, we we'll rebuild all this uh, and then hopefully it will fit the gearbox and we'll get gears and then once we do that, we can do a burn out! Volvo's done. Best part of working on a car drift fan is getting to test it. Um, as you can see, great weather, just started snowing again. So I'm just walking around just now. I've got my helmet, need that. Uh, I've also got my approved uh, footwear for testing cars. The old Adidas high tops, drift and approved car test material. So here, here she is. Uh, obviously needs a clean, but it's good to go. Got the drift wheels on the back. Even though your coolest wheels should be your drift wheels, but we'll get to that. So I'm just going to get it set up uh, and then take this out for a test drive. Right. So after spending way too long getting the camera set up, good to go. We do test drives a lot uh, at Driftland. Obviously one of the advantages to having a garage on site at a track is the fact that we've got a track. Um, so. You know, we've been doing a lot of work on Matthew's Volvo. Um, so, there's various things that I need to do before I can give it absolute death, basically. So the sort of thing we look for, um, especially because this car's had uh, work on the oil system. So, first thing I do, drive around nice and slow. Um, just let everyone move around a little bit, check gauges and stuff, make sure I'm happy with everything. Check the brakes, obviously, make sure they're working. Uh, just make sure there's no obvious issues with the car, then I'll stop, get out, have a quick look around, get back in, do a bit of fast grip driving, stop again, check the car over again, just make sure we're happy with everything, and then, then it's time to do a skid. The, the cool thing about this car, aside from the fact that it's a turbo Volvo, is that the owner, Matthew, specifically said, make sure Kyle gives it a really good test. So I'm going to do that. But well, before I do that, I just need to make sure that everything's working. You know, all the basics, like brakes. Let's check the brakes, right? Yeah, they're there. They're there. You don't need brakes that much in drifting anyways. So, we'll just go in, have a quick check over, make sure there's no obvious issues. Then we can give it some abuse. Nothing, nah, I just, I never give them a uh, full death without having a little gentle driving and checking, eh? Especially when you've got an oil system. All good in the hood there. Hey, 
for drifting! Okay, so nothing's broken yet. Uh, no leaks. I uh, just checked over the oil system. Um, pretty good. Um, the temps in here are looking alright. I don't whether I fully trust the gauges or not. Yeah, don't know. We'll see. Next, I'm going to do some hard driving. Uh, again, just going to do full throttle and just make sure I see everything I want to see. obviously means really stable. It's actually really easy to drift, I'm quite impressed. Got a wee exhaust rat on the floor, which sounds a lot like debt, <laughs> but it's not. It's actually really easy to drift, really nice. Plenty of power, actually loads of lock as well. Got a wee bit of a vibration, so we're going to have to have a look at that. <laughs> 